Francis II was a monarch of the House of Alois Angoulême who was King of France from 1559 to 1560. He was also King Consort of Scotland as a result of his marriage to Mary, Queen of Scots, from 1558 until his death. He ascended the throne of France at the age of 14 after the accidental death of his father, Henry II, in 1559. His short reign was dominated by the first stirrings of the French wars of religion and the loss of French possessions in Corsica, Tuscany, Savoy, and almost all of Piedmont under the Treaty of Cateau Cambrasis. Although the royal age of majority had been set at 14, his mother, Catherine de Medici, entrusted the reins of government to his wife's uncles from the House of Guise, staunch supporters of the Catholic cause. They were unable to help Catholics in Scotland against Scottish reformers, however, and the old alliance was dissolved. Francis was succeeded by two of his brothers in turn, both of whom were also unable to reduce tensions between Protestants and Catholics. Childhood and Education Born eleven years after his parents' wedding, Francis was named for his grandfather, King Francis I. The long delay in producing an heir may have been a reason for his mother's repudiation by his father in favour of his mistress Diane de Poitiers. Francis was at first raised at the Chateau de Saint-Germain-en-Laye. He was baptised on 10 February 1544 at the Chapelle des Trinitaires in Fontainebleau. His godparents were Francis I, Pope Paul III, and his great-aunt Marguerite de Navarre. He became governor of Languedoc in 1546 and orphan of France in 1547 when his grandfather Francis I died. Francis's governor was Jean Dumiers and his tutor was Pierre Danes, a Greek scholar originally from Naples. He learned dancing from Virgilio Bracesco and fencing from Hector of Mantua. King Henry II, his father, arranged a remarkable betrothal for his son to Mary, Queen of Scots, in the Châtillon Agreement of 27 January 1548, when Francis was only four years old. Mary had been crowned Queen of Scots in Stirling Castle on 9 September 1543 at the age of nine months following the death of her father James V. Besides being the Queen of Scotland, Mary was a granddaughter of Claude, Duke of Guise, a very influential figure at the court of France. Once the marriage agreement was formally ratified, the six-year-old Mary was sent to France to be raised at court until the marriage. Although Mary was tall for her age and eloquent, while her betrothed Francis was abnormally short and stutted, Henry II commented that, from the very first day they met, my son and she got on as well together as if they had known each other for a long time. On 24 April 1558, the 14-year-old Dauphin married the Queen of Scots in a union that could have given the future kings of France the throne of Scotland and also a claim to the throne of England through Mary's great-grandfather, King Henry VII of England. Until his death, Francis held the title King Consort of Scotland. Mary and Francis were to have no children during their short marriage, however, possibly due to Francis's illnesses or his undescended testicles, becoming king. A little over a year after his marriage, on 10 July 1559, Francis became king at the age of 15 upon the death of his father Henry II, who had been killed in a jousting accident. On 21 September 1559, Francis II was crowned king in Reims by his uncle Charles, Cardinal of Lorraine. The crown was so heavy that nobles had to hold it in place for him. The court then moved to the Loire Valley, where the Chateau de Blois and the surrounding forests were the new king's home. Francis II took the sun for his emblem and for his motto Spectanda Fidus and Lumen Rectus. According to French law, Francis at the age of 15 was an adult who in theory did not need a regent. But since he was young, inexperienced, and in fragile health, he delegated his power to his wife's uncles from the noble house of Guise, Francois, Duke of Guise, and Charles, Cardinal of Lorraine. 
His mother, Catherine de Medici, agreed to this delegation. On the first day of his reign, Francis II instructed his four ministers to take orders from his mother. But since she was still in mourning for the loss of her husband, she directed them to the House of Guise. The two eldest brothers of the House of Guise had already had major roles in the reign of Henry II. Francis, Duke of Guise, was one of the most famous military commanders in the royal army and the Cardinal of Lorraine had participated in the most important negotiations and matters of the kingdom. After the young king ascended the throne, the two brothers split the custody of the kingdom. Francis became head of the army and Charles the head of finance, justice, and diplomacy. The rise of the House of Guise worked to the detriment of its old rival, Anne de Montmorency, constable of France. At the new king's suggestion, he left the court for his estates to get some rest. Diane de Poitiers, mistress of the previous king, was also asked not to appear at court. Her protégé Jean Bertrand had to surrender his title keeper of the seals of France to Chancellor François Olivier whom Diane had removed from this position a few years earlier. It was a palace revolution. The transition has been described as brutal, but while it no doubt caused the constable considerable frustration, there were no confrontations or reprisals, and de Montmorency remained tied to power. As soon as the day after the death of the king, he was present at the council meeting and was also at the coronation. Later he supported the repression of the conjuration of Amboise, notably by going to the Parliament of Paris to communicate to its members the measures taken by the king. In July 1560 he came back to court and to the council, although in a much less flamboyant manner than before. The Guises were now the new masters of the court. The king granted them numerous favours and privileges, one of the most significant being the title of Grand Master of France, a title until then held by the son of the constable, François de Montmorency.